hey guys welcome back to the channel and today i'm going to be doing something a little bit different this is going to be pack 12 all-star team of the decade as in um players from all the pack 12 schools for as in one team and uh i i think i put all the all the school uh, at least one player from each school i don't remember but uh, let's get on to it and we start with starting quarterback uh, Marcus Mariota from Oregon uh, he was just something special uh, since I think 2012 or 2013 he uh, led or the Oregon Ducks to greatness and he led them to the national championship in 2014 in the first college football playoff ever um, it was a coin flip between him and the backup quarterback that uh, that I had. But, however, Marcus Mariota has played in the national championship, whereas the backup quarterback hasn't. So that was my tiebreaker. And moving on to the backup quarterback, we've got Andrew Luck from Stanford. Uh, he was just amazing. He actually he was the number one pick in the 2012 draft to the Indianapolis Colts and uh, he, he also could have played in the national championship had one or two games gone Stanford's way but I mean uh, he was something special uh, he went 12-1 and one in 2010 I think 11-2 in 2011 and uh, they were pretty close to playing in the Natty in two consecutive years. Uh, so, I mean, this again, it was a coin flip between him and Marcus Mariota for, like, the uh, starting position. And moving on to the third-string quarterback, we have Sam Darnold. So, the reasons why I chose him were was because of his amazing time at USC, which, and his... Uh, first year that he played it ended in a number three ranking which could have been a little too high since especially since he had three losses in september however the long win streak i assume got him to the three to the third position and then in a year later they uh the he led the usc trojans all the way to the eighth pos eighth position in the rankings in the entire fs so um I feel like this is a subjective grade, however, like, uh, he's good, however, uh, he's not at the level at, in, of, uh, the other two quarterbacks compar comparing their time, in my opinion, and this is, uh, the quarterback position, we're going to move on to the running back position, so moving on to the running back position, we have Christian McCaffrey, I mean, it was going to be hard to make this list without including him, so uh, Christian McCaffrey was amazing. He, uh, at Stanford, he could have almost made the college football playoff in 2015. Um, had one or two results gone his way, uh, the Stanford could have made the playoff also. So, I mean, he, he was just... Uh, something special and he's now drafted and uh, he went to the Carolina Panthers for time being so I think he like deserves this position on mostly because of the records he set up and because of how he impacted the Stanford program next for the second starting running back we have I have CJ Burdell so um, he was just amazing uh, this past season he's a projected first rounder maybe even top five uh pick and i mean he honestly deserves it especially since what we saw in the pac-12 championship game and uh, this year and the last year and the rest of the way up to that point he just had an amazing 2019 campaign and i think this uh, amounts to him being the second starting running back only behind christian mccaffrey so moving on to the third running back Moving on to the flex option running back, I have Kadeem Carey from Arizona. He, uh, he played in Arizona from 2011 to 2013, and 
In 2012, he ran for more than 2,500 yards and had around more than 20 touchdowns. And uh, he would have, uh, although he would, his stats would uh, decline in 2013, he still have pretty good stats with 1,000, with more than 1,000 rushing yards and around more than 15 touchdowns. And uh, his career, although like it didn't like propel Arizona to much, it was pretty good in my opinion. So um, this is why I have him on this t on my team in this list. And moving on to the backups, I have Zach Moss as the first backup running back, who was outstanding this past 2019 season. He had, uh, I think more than around 2,000 rushing yards at Utah, and uh, he almost led the Utes to a playoff position. Had they won versus Oregon, they would have had a, a playoff position, and potentially uh, they would have played versus LSU in, uh, in the college football playoff. And he got drafted by the Buffalo Bills, and I can't wait to see what comes out. Uh, how he does, to be honest. I can't wait to see how he does there. And that's why I have it on my list. The second backup I have is none other than UCLA's Joshua Kelly. Who had a lot of rushing yards in 2018. And was the prime, and was uh, a fundamental factor in, the, in some parts of the scoring that we had of... Uh, our offense that we had, and even though he received less touches in 2019, he still put up decent numbers, which were enough for the LA Chargers to pick him up. And in his first and second game, and he's only for two games in the NFL, he's done pretty good. So um, that is why. I, so uh, I decided to put him on this list. And moving on to the wide receivers, I have. Brandon Cooks from Oregon State, who, well, was an amazing receiver for them. He was first-team All-American Honors, first-team All-Pac-12, uh, among many other awards also, and he had an amazing career for, at Oregon State from 2011 to 2013. And um, for his time at the NFL, he's done, well, good, I could say, especially his rookie year at the New Orleans Saints, among others. So, um, I think it makes sense to have him on this list, especially since, uh, on this team, especially since, like, what he did. And moving on to the second wide receiver, we, I have Brandon Ayuk. Now, um, I could have put Juju Smith-Schuster at wide receiver, or, um, or a guy like Amon Ross State Brown, but I ultimately choose Brandon Ayuk because of like uh, his amazing play. I mean, in 2019, he had amazing catches like uh, that catch versus Oregon on third and on third and long, like really long, and uh, he won many awards too. And, like, now he got drafted by the San Francisco 49ers. And I'm still waiting to see what he does in the NFL. Especially since I support the 49ers. And, uh, now that he's on my team, I can't wait to see what happens. So, at the flex wide receiver, we have Keenan Allen. Which, originally, wasn't even going to commit to Cal. I think he was going to commit to, um, Alabama or something like that. But then he f shifted his commitment to Cal, and he was amazing. He was, I mean, amazing. It, it was the right choice. It's like, he was amazing at Cal. He put up amazing stats, and now he's on the Chargers, where he con continues to do, like, uh, to be an amazing player. And, well, um, I think he's gonna, I think he, I could have put um, him over, I could have also put him over Brandon Ayuk or switched them, but... Eventually, I decided Keenan Allen for the flex star wide receiver. And moving on to the backups, we have Paul Richardson from Colorado, which was, I mean, he was amazing. Although, like, uh, he forego 
the 2019 se- the 2019 or 2020 season, don't remember, to uh, go to the NFL draft. Uh, he was amazing at his time at Colorado. Like he had more than he had more than a thousand three hundred forty three. Uh, yards in his in his last year at Colorado and I mean he was an amazing he was an amazing player and he's currently on the Seattle Seahawks as of to date our second backup is Dante Pettis who uh who was at Washington until very recently and is is now at the San Francisco 49ers and he was a great player to say the least and although it hasn't worked out much for him in the NFL partially due to injury in the 2019 season which didn't allow him to uh, develop um, he was pretty good in college at Washington and I feel like that was good enough to get him to this position and moving on to the tight end I have Zach Ertz who played at Stanford he was an amazing player and is currently right now um, the one of the best, if not the best, tight end in all the NFL, who is now at the Philadelphia Eagles. So I think that says more than enough that like Zachary should be starting. And for the flex wide receiver tight end, um, I didn't have much for like I try to get a player for Washington State. However, like, they didn't have any tight ends at all. So I decided to go for the wide, flex wide receiver tight end position, which would, which would correspond to Gabe Marks. Like, he was dynamic. He was ultra dynamic at uh, Washington State at the time he was there. I believe he was there from 2015 to, like, 2017 or 18. And he was just amazing every single year there. And, like, he was an amazing player. And now moving on to the defense, we have, at the defense, I have the Oregon Ducks. With, from, specifically from the 2019 season, which was an amazing unit altogether. And as of 2020, they, if they were to play, they would have the second best defense in the league. Only behind, uh, possibly, the Georgia Bulldogs, who, um... Uh, only be behind the, the Georgia Bulldogs. And this team was amazing all year round at the defense position. And now finally, at the head coach position, I have David Shaw. Now, I could have chosen Mario Crystal Ball, but I went for David Shaw because um, the Stanford program before him, well, the decade before uh, this one was pretty much uh, one of the worst for Stanford football. And they somehow emerged to the best team in in a ten year span for stan for all of California teams. And when you look at um, his time at Stanford plus what he's done for the program, I think uh, he deserves to be uh, the all team Pac twelve coach. You could argue otherwise, but uh, thanks for watching this video. Hope you like it. Share and subscribe, and comment below if you would change anything. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.